Good morning again, everyone. Welcome back to the KSR YouTube channel. It's bright and early here in Gainesville, Florida. Travis and I are down here early to get some work done on mullet. Um, I believe by the time this video is posted, you guys will have gotten us past 170,000 subs. And that's just awesome. Like, I never expected this thing to take off like it is. Granted, most of it's because of Cletus stuff. You guys know we do other stuff besides just Cletus stuff. We got this build coming here eventually. That is a 63 Chevy 2 twin turbo LS. We've got the fourth gen F body over there. Single turbo LS. The Viper. We're still waiting on some parts for and then hopefully later this year we're gonna work on my car. Actually Travis's truck's coming down here too. So we got Travis's truck to build, my truck to build, or my my car to build. We've got to keep the Viper going for Trans Am. All that good stuff. We've got a little bit of welding to do on the seatbelt tabs. Like you can see where I've been working on, uh, where they go through the floor. They're not welded. They're not welded to the floor. They're welded to the cage, but I silicon bronze welded them or brazed them to the floor. Um, yeah, so we're doing doing that so it's like seals the floor off and it's doubly supported takes some of the rattle out of the floor with it being all a sheet metal floor but for now travis is back over here working on the radiator see he's got the mounts done for the where the radiator is going to mount to i've got a little welding to do here just to shore that up all the way around so we got radiator we're going to talk about seat belts we're going to talk about bump steer Hopefully get the radiator mounted today. Yeah, lots of stuff happening. So we're gonna get to work. See you guys in the next segment. All right, everybody. First thing that's kind of exciting about this video, at least for me anyways, we came up with another shirt. And this is one that I have told a ton of people in person. I don't think I've said it on a video yet. Maybe I have, if I have, I don't remember. But one thing that I say a ton is everything needs a turbo. See, we got the nifty little KSR logo on the front. Maybe that, that's blurry. Come on. Anyways, KSR logo on the front, a little splash around it, a little blue border. Everything needs a turbo on the back. Win with KSR.com website. Well, I like them. So we will have these at Cletus and Cars Bradenton, but we're also doing a pre-order where you can order them online. Should be by the time this video's up. You'll be able to go online and order them. And when they come in, when we pick them up or they ship them to us, we will ship them right out to you guys. So I thought it was going to be a week and a half, two weeks, which puts us right before Cletus and Cars Bradenton. If we don't get them until Cletus and Cars Bradenton, we'll ship them out right after that. If we get them before, we'll ship out all of the pre-orders before we leave for Cletus and Cars Bradenton. And if you guys haven't checked the driver's list for the Freedom 500, So that's gonna be awesome. I get a chance to redeem myself from the 2.4 hours of lay mullets. But for the international people, we discovered a problem between our web host and the USPS. I won't get into that, but they say they're fixing it. It happened about three weeks ago where all of a sudden all of our international stuff dried up all of our international shipping orders. And some of you guys were making comments on uh, the videos that you were having problems with the shipping. Bear with us. If you would like to send us an email, send it to admin at winwithksr.com if you have a problem. That way we will have a log of it. And then as soon as we get it working, we can either email you back so that you can place your order or I will make an announcement about it on the video. So 
Appreciate that. Appreciate everybody subscribing. Please share, comment, like, all this other stuff. Let's see if we can get to 200,000 subscriptions here pretty soon. But uh, I got to go get back to work in the shop on mullet. Here we go. So last video, I had Travis holding the camera through the welding helmet while we were doing some welding and that fitting was kind of hard to see. It was a little blurry, it was a little loud. Sorry guys that were listening on your headphones. Um, we're gonna try it again, except I'm gonna put the camera in the helm, in my helmet and kind of just hold it between my chin and the face of the helmet. Might be my chin, might be my nose, I don't know. I'm gonna put this thing in there and I'm gonna do the, the welds on this joint right here. So it'll be a lot bigger of a weld and I think you'll be able to see something better. So let's see what happens. Put this thing up in here. Dipped it a couple times, but I think we'll be all right. All right, here we go again. Turn the big one on it, let's suck it out real quick because it's gonna rise. I don't wanna hear shit about me and fire anymore. Hey, I didn't set you on fire. You about shut the whole shop on fire. No. Well, we all make mistakes, right? Oh, uh, I just had a little one that could have been bad. Um, I forgot to move the ground from the car to my bench so i'm welding along here and all of a sudden there's smoke and fire no it went Ooh. yeah it, it had a little it had a little fire going on there so whoops but everything's good stinks a little bit hopefully that welding shot worked a little smoky in the shop so the recap what just happened there this was hooked to the car instead of to the bench or the piece I'm working with. So the ground path through the car, through the lift, through the electrical system, into the building, around, down, until it caught the cord on fire. Always ground right to the piece you're working with. But cost me a power strip and probably uh probably should replace that outlet but the question is was it welding good oh yeah it was welding good <laughs> <laughs> so i'm gonna try this again all right so there's what our weld looks like and uh, Also got that welded on. CJ's fixing my whoopsie with the bench. We had a power strip mounted to the bottom of the table. Travis is mocking up the transmission. You can see our adapter for the Speed sensor on the gear vendor's overdrive is rubbing, but 
We're gonna bonk a little clearance into that. I can't go too much because the seat is right on the other side of this panel right there. And then we're also working on mounting the dump valve here so that the next time the transmission goes in, it's in for good. See, we got our hole cut for being able to access the band adjustment right there. So band adjustment is right over the right over the shifter, and we'll also be able to hook up the shifter through our through our hole. But coming along. All right, so a little bit of a crazy day, but we got a ton of stuff done. Transmission was in, transmission was out. I should have done a video, but we were too busy thrashing out work because we're on a deadline. We gotta get this thing ready for Cletus and Cars Bradenton. Get this thing down there where you guys can see it in person. So we've got our hole cut for the access to the, uh, the band adjustment on the shifter. And yes, there's gonna be a cover on the inside of the car. Still need to make, we gotta make a patch for this as well. And then back here, you can see where we added a brace for the seat. Uh, this is one of the seat belt holes. It's really close to the bar, so we're gonna make a little, may, may have to like custom fit a nut that fits up in that little trough right there, but no biggie there. The other seat hole will be somewhere out in here. It's already got the hole from the top side through the floor, but does not have the hole through the bottom. This is the seat belt tab. And for anybody installing their own seatbelt tabs, this is also an anchor for a seatbelt tab. Anchor your seatbelts to something secure. Roll cage, pretty much the roll cage. If your car has a roll cage in it, attach it to the roll cage. Like you can see where the, this is the seatbelt anchor on the driver's side for the inside belt and then on the outside belt it actually lands right on top of the bar but with the passenger side you know we, the car came to us with a floor in it so it's a little bit tougher to to fit tabs on top of a bar when it's already got a floor sandwich right on top of it so we did it kind of how we did it over there plus that's also seat brace it's all good there this is the bottom of the shifter mount you see we welded the studs here so those stick up through the floor for us to do some fabricating on there i've got the brake lines started on the front so those are gonna go up this one just actually goes up to the one side of the line lock solenoid one over here is going to go inside the car up over the transmission tunnel come back out actually where that green and blue tape is come out through there for you g-body guys you can see how much this got cut down i mean we cut over i think we cut near an inch off of this lip so that's not going to cause us any problems with getting the transmission in and out over here on the transmission we welded the temperature the pan temperature sensor into the pan the return for the dump valve this is our dump valve solenoid. And if you guys don't know what that does, basically it softens up the power coupling between the engine and the transmission. Why do we need to do that? For one, it helps spool. If you've got a combination that is big turbo, little engine, tight converter, because you're making a lot of power, you can dump the fluid pressure that is in the torque converter and the converter will act like a little bit higher stall torque converter. And when you're on a track that's not so great, you can launch with the converter valve open and it softens that apply so it doesn't just wanna strike the tire and spin the tires right at the starting line. So that's something we have that we'll be able to play with. Also on big power stuff, you can unlock it right before the shift. It's not really unlocking it. I shouldn't have said that. It's it softens it again. This is not a lockup converter that's in this thing, but it will soften the apply. So this line comes out. This is out of the torque converter. And there's gonna be a T here that takes the line to the back to run to the cooler. But then actually, well, there's the T right there. So this line is gonna to connect to here. 
and we've got our temperature sensor our low dollar motorsports temperature sensor that's going to go into this fitting right here whoops then this connects to here and when the solenoid opens fluid will flow directly back right into the pan it bypasses the cooler which bypasses the return circuit the stall of the converter gets higher converter acts a little bit looser makes it get down a track but it's not as fast we accidentally ran it ran a pass in soccer mom with it completely unlocked the entire pass and it slowed down like almost two tenths and like a ton of mile an hour i'm in the car driving going what in the heck well we hurt the thing and then i found a setting that i had missed or accidentally changed that i didn't mean to change and so it went slow anyways lots of working to get that all situated uh, you can see we installed our dipstick well the base of the dipstick and that's a pretty snazzy piece from low car so when you get going fast nhra wants you to have a locking dipstick in the transmission and i'm even going to do one in the engine as well but basically this also helps for getting the thing in and out of a car see if I can hold this all and do this okay so pull that dipstick is in and it also you can't pull the dipstick out without releasing that and the dipstick comes out so that way if the transmission ever makes a lot of heat and pressure in there it will not blow the dipstick out blow oil everywhere and under the car and give you a really bad day so we're going to have one of these on the engine should be here tomorrow and also transmission dipstick little things little things little things all right so to show you the top side of our seat belt stuff you can see where so there's our tabs for the containment seat and then we've welded nice quarter inch thick tab between the cage and a big strong member of the body and then we're going to have a clip-in belt basically the belt's just like this snaps in nice and quick and then you actually put a little cotter pin through that hole so they can't come off until you want them to come off and if you can kind of see the height of them they're going to end up pretty much level with the driver's shoulders depending on how tall they are for cletus there may be an inch below the top of his shoulders which is probably about the maximum you want if your belts are way below your shoulders and you get into an incident and your belts come tight you can think it's going to pinch together as you go forward in the car compress your back you don't want that lots of back injuries other kinds of problems on top of your already crashing your car bad day all around for the lap belts see we got an anchor here those are going to get clip in tabs bolted to them same with over there and then we've got this is the front of the seat mount this attaches right to the cage and then there's clip in eye ring clip in eyelets under here because the seat the bottom of the seat literally sits right on top of these so we'll clip in there that'll be the the thigh belts they call them for a six point system instead of just a crotch belt for a five point so some of you may understand why you would want a six point instead of a five point when you draw a straight line down ugh, six point much better anyways that's kind of what we got going on with the seats this is getting painted first thing tomorrow morning i would do it now but i'm running late i've got my kids in the office and they're amazing putting up with me doing all this stuff but i've got to get them home and get them fed and then to bed for school tomorrow but that's going to wrap up this video the next uh the next few videos are going to be all mullet because we are smashing on this thing to get it to the track although we are taking the lawn dart out 
Saturday. So I got to take a couple hours off Saturday. Luckily the track is only 10 minutes away. So we're going to go deal with that. Try to get Dick some good shakedown runs in the lawn dart. But until then, see you next time.